California's death penalty is protect the innocent and help murder victim family members. Everyone here today has powerful reasons to support Safe California. There's a warden, a prosecutor, an exoneree, there's family members. And of course, there's all of you, and each of us is funding our state's dysfunctional death penalty to the tune of $1 billion tax dollars every five years. I'm here as a mother. My son, Arthur Carmona, was wrongfully arrested, prosecuted, and convicted of two armed robberies when he was just 16 years old. He was in prison for two years while I tried every way I knew to get him out. Several years after he got out of prison, my son was murdered in a hit and run accident. The driver purposely ran him down. So I am just one mother, but I have two very personal reasons to support Save California. I know that innocent men, women, and children, like my son, end up in state prison. And I know that it is a very horrible place to be. I also know the pain of losing a loved one to violence. Safe California will help to protect the innocent. Our criminal justice system is very far from perfect. And when my son was in prison, it sometimes seemed nearly impossible to find a way through it. But we did. Safe California will also help families like mine, making sure that we use our limited funds to prevent crimes before they happen. That sounds, that's a sound investment I can support in my son's name, Arthur Carmona. Thank you. And our final speaker this morning is Lorraine Taylor. Um, she lost both of her sons to murder um, and she's part of, she's the founder of 1,000 Mothers to Prevent Violence. Good morning. I'm Lorraine Taylor, and I want to replace California's death penalty to prevent violence. In the year 2000, I lost both of my twin sons, Abadi and Obadiah, to gun violence in the city of Oakland. They were both college students and productive citizens. Their cases remain unsolved. Their tragic deaths crippled my life for almost a decade, and I'm still healing. However, I'm not the only one. In the city of Oakland alone, there has been more than 1,000 mothers who have lost a child to gun violence. This system is clearly not working, and justice is not served until crime victims are. I support Safe California because it will focus on preventing crime. The death penalty in itself is an act of violence. It does not ensure public safety, and it does not serve crime victims. I believe that it is best for the overall good of the community that if rapists and murderers get life without the possibility of parole, this will not only ensure public safety, but also free taxpayers' dollars for crime for prevention, support and services to benefit grieving mothers like myself, fathers, and grandparents who are taking care of children left behind. The death penalty system is indeed a broken promise that cannot be fixed by the system itself. But we the people of California can. We have the power to do so, and we must. Thank you. So we'll open up to any questions you have from any of us. Um, I'm going to bring Steve up to talk about polling information. Uh, the latest polling we've done with David Binder Research on this precise proposal, uh, it was favored by 54% of the, of the vote, of likely voters in 2012 on this exact proposal. 
secretary, it takes a lot of money to put an initiative on the ballot. Uh, any deep pockets that you can identify or where do you get the money for? Uh, we're continuing to do fundraising. Um, the money is coming from a variety of sources and we're still working on that. Grassroots sort of thing or organizations that most of the large uh, I think I'm going to have bring our campaign consultant up again. My voice is pretty big. Um, we just really started fundraising in a serious way in the last couple of weeks. In fact, we have very significant commitments that we are sure we will have enough money to qualify for the ballot, and we're sure we're going to have enough money to have a very robust conversation with California's voters. None of that, most of that is right now in commitments, as you can well imagine, we started last Thursday. Uh, but it, we're pretty confident. What do you, what do you think it'll cost? And Steve Smith. And it's largely, by the way, at this point, in business. What do you think it'll cost? Qualify the ballot measures a million to a million and a half. And, and, you know, when you start talking to the voters, that's completely dependent on what the what various costs are next fall, which could be significant. Can you talk about just briefly where the money that you're, you're saving is, is going and why you pick that as opposed to just that? To repeat, I didn't roll. I'm sorry, the, the money that you're, you're, you're trying to redirect the, the money that you believe can be saved by all the that and putting it back into certain causes. So uh, explain why, you, uh, why you're doing that as opposed to the general fund and why you're doing that. Well, we're very concerned uh, about the number of police officers that have been taken off our streets in California because of the budget crisis, and we're, we have also listened to the voices of victims. And uh, unsolved homicides and unsolved rapes are clearly... Uh, a horrific issue and a major concern for victims. And so we felt it was necessary to direct money uh, to uh, address those issues. Did you want to comment? Let me permit me to speak a little bit for law enforcement. There's not a district attorney's office, public defender's office, or police agency, including sheriff's department in the state of California that hasn't suffered cutbacks. And those cutbacks affect everything. And that means fewer murder investigations, fewer rape investigations. The resources are, ne are necessary to be there. So what we are trying to do is give them a bridge. We think things are going to improve three, four years. This is funding for three years. It will be for investigations of murder cases, open murder cases, and open rape cases. Would you repeat the question again? I'm sorry, I didn't hear it all myself. I don't know if we all could hear it. Why don't you move a little closer? Okay. Wait a minute. Let, let that big truck go by. What is your expectation that these times voters will support uh, the measure? And the other thing is, what would you say to those victims that are opposed to the elimination of the death penalty? There are some who are opposed to the elimination of the death penalty, but I think once they are shown how long it takes for the death penalty process to be completed, if it's ever completed, and that most of the inmates die of natural causes in jail rather than being executed, and the incredible cost of where those monies could be used in a better way, I think will convert many of those individuals. And I want to point out that you heard from two victim family members today, and they, they offer the different perspective that our resources could be utilized to make us all safer by solving unsolved homicides and unsolved rapes. Are you planning a campaign of education? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Are you planning to make like, a kind of campaign of education? Uh, yes, all right. we do intend to uh, continue to educate the voters about this issue. And as you know, there's been two recent studies that came out that, that talked about the cost of capital punishment and how ineffective and broken it is. And so um, we hope to get that information out to everyone. That's why you're here today, and there's some fact sheets in your press packet. Or you had something on costs, I, I, because the general public has no understanding that in capital cases, defendants get two court-appointed lawyers at a minimum. They spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on doing what is known as mitigation investigations. 
because mitigation under the um, death penalty initiative is required to be presented to the jury for the jury to weigh the decision should this person be sentenced to death or life without possibility of parole. The way this new initiative is drafted, there is no such thing as mitigation for a jury to decide. You save literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in each capital case going forward by eliminating that enormous cost. You don't need multiple lawyers. But if someone has a, if someone's can afford private counsel, he can get as many lawyers as he wishes. Under the, um, the process in California, which is uh, mandated by U.S. Supreme Court decisions, the defendant is entitled to competent counsel, effective counsel, a single lawyer. So we say, say going forward from the day this initiative takes effect, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in each case that would have been a capital case that is and that would then be a case with punishment is life without possibility of parole. Yes. Yeah, I, I think my question is, can you address the role that the CCPOA, the California Correctional Peace Officers Association, has played in keeping the death penalty in, in effect here in California and continues to play on a political level? Because the Peace Officers Association, the Correctional Peace Officers Association, plays a role in this and continues to do so. Well, I'm not sure that I can address that. I, you know, they come out in support or against different initiatives, and I'm not sure where they stand on this one at this point in time. But they also support some of the major groups, family groups, that um, support the death penalty as well in the state, correct? They do support some victims' groups, that is true, yes. The deadline for signatures is? 150 days after they give us title to some we, we need 800,000 signatures? Totally, about, just over 500,000 dollars. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time.